Right, so today I'm going to start off by walking through how to create an SVG graphics, a vector graphic for Gran Turismo. Now, a lot of people in my guild have asked me how I've managed to do this with some of these because there's a size limit of 15 kilobits, which is extremely hard to hit if you use the built-in copy bitmap function in a lot of tools. So I'm going to just go through a couple of options here on how to, how to create a graphic and how to reduce the size for that kind of thing. Uh, the tool I'm using is Inkscape. Uh, it's available free of charge from uh, inkscape.org, that page there. You can download different versions for your different operating systems, that's Windows, Mac, OS, and Linux as well. So anyway, I've downloaded it, I've installed it. I've also got my image that I want to turn into a vector. So if I go to File, and then Import, and then it's this Metroid here that I want to import. So I'm going to select him, bring him on in, uh, I'm always going to set this type to embed, and it's always from file. The rendering mode I always leave on none as well. I, I've not really played around with that. And in fact, I should probably preface everything I'm about to show you. I've learned quite rapidly in the last sort of 24 hours or so where I've been playing around with this. There are quite possibly better ways of doing this. So if you know them, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, but this is just to get people started on this. Hopefully, with, once more people understand how to go about doing this, we'll see a lot more vectors appearing on there. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a fair few on the market at the moment, but uh, it's uh, one of those things where I think it's it's quite a high level of entry when it doesn't need to be, and mainly because of that size restriction. So anyway, this is our graphic, and what I want to do now is I've imported it, and I now want to get a what's called a path from it. So we go to Path, Trace Bitmap, and we'll get a section of options. Don't worry too much about the, all the other options in here. The ones we want are Live Preview and Colors. You can tick smooth. If you watch what happens to the preview image, though, when I tick it, it becomes a little bit more fuzzy. I'm not a big fan of that. I quite like my sharp graphics, so I leave that off. But it's entirely up to you whether or not you have that or not. Stack scans I always have ticked, and remove background I always tick just to get rid of any off-white backgrounds that are there that I don't really need. So with that, I'll hit OK. I'll create our import, and I can drag it off over here. So I've now, now got two versions of the same image. If you ever get confused and aren't sure which one's which, if you select one of them and look down in the bottom corner here, it'll tell you basically that one is an image. I don't need to worry about that. That's our old one. This one here, it just changes back to select an image to trace. So that's how we know. That's our vector graphic. That's our group of vectors there. So to avoid any further confusion like that, I'm going to delete the old one. So that can go. So we've now got our vector graphic. And if I save this as is, I can tell you now it's going to be too big. So I'll do it just to demonstrate. So I'll do save. And I'm going to call it uh, Metroid Logo Test. You can see I've got a load of logos in there already. So if we now go into that folder and look at Metroid Logo Test, we can see down here the file size is 42.2K. So it's 40 odd kilobytes, so it's way too big. We've got 15 kilobytes to play with on the uploader. Now, there are several reasons for that. The most common one is the amount of, um, I want to call them vectors, which I guess is possibly the correct name for them. It's the, it's the amount of points on the image. So, as I said, that's an entire graphic. So what we want to do is break that down so we can see those vectors. So if we select our image, and then we can go to Object, and it should be ungroup in here somewhere. There it is, ungroup. This is where you see what the image is made up of. So I've got the black top level. I've then got sort of this transparent faded, and I've got all these different levels of transparency and faded out of this same graphic. And then we've also got the background color as well. Now, all of these different levels are adding to it. So if we look at the path on each one, so let me just select one a second. All of these path nodes on each one are going to add to our total size. So what we want to do is try and reduce that down. So there's an easy way to do that. We don't need all these colors because what we really want is the basic logo. We want the background and the logo. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of these. And I'm just going to grab this one. I just drag him back over there. So there we go. That's aligned back up. So we've now only got two layers to it. Although if I switch to logo view, there you go. As you can still see, there are still a lot of points on this. So it may not bring the size down enough. It may do. We can find out in a second. Now, I'm just going to fine tune, because now I've zoomed in, I can see that we're missing a little bit of the top there. Some of these you will find, yeah, there's like bits leaking out all over the side. So 
That's not a problem. We can tidy that up, though, which is quite handy. So what I'll do before I tidy it up, I'm just going to line you back up there. So first of all, getting rid of all those other those other grouped components that make it all up. Let's see what size that's brought it down to. So I'll do save again. 10.5. So we're actually straight under the barrier. I could use that if I wanted to, to go straight in and upload it. That's not a real problem. Yeah, 10.5k. Absolutely fine. Now, what I did say is, there's, is we noticed on the top, there's a lot of discrepancies. It doesn't look 100% tidy as it could do. So there's a couple of tricks here to further reduce the size of it. So what we can do is I can go into the vector view. And we know there's two paths here. So you can see when I highlight it, I get this red outline over the black one. Ooh, there we go. That red outline over the black one tells me that's one path. And then if I highlight the background, you can see another path lights up very briefly. Now the background one's quite simple. As you can see, it goes all the way around the outside. But for some reason, it also goes around the teeth as well. We don't need that. There's no reason it should be there at all. So we can actually delete all those paths. Now, what the system will do is try and compensate for this. And in fact, you know what? Let's separate this out a bit so I can hide it. So, let's switch back a second. I'm going to create a new layer. Similar to Photoshop, if you ever use that, the layers can be used to hide things and move things around. So let's call this new layer background. And I want it behind the current. Or below current. There we go. So I now come back up and let's just separate the image out. So there's our background. And I want to send that, move to layer, background. Move it. I'm going to drag you back over the front here, line you back up. There you go. So what I've actually done now is I've created two layers. The front layer, which has our main black image here, and our background layer, which has the background. Now, to avoid, one thing I've found is when you're working on these, it can be quite awkward to, you keep clicking the wrong item, grabbing the wrong thing. So by separating them out into layers, it allows you to do quite a handy thing, which is select the layer you don't want to work on and click the little padlock down here in the corner. So I can't interact with that top layer now anymore. As you notice, the moment I click on anything, it immediately goes to background down here. It's not letting me select the top layer. That's fine, that's what I need it to do. So now, we can click on our background layer and we can edit it without worry. And in fact, what we can also do is hide our top layer. So I've gone down, selected layer one, click the eyeball, that's hidden our top layer. So we're clearly, we're, we're purely working off this. Now as you'll notice with a lot of these, they're still trying to fill those shapes. Although we deleted a lot of the vectors earlier, they're still trying to delete uh, sorry, a lot of indices. That's what they would be called, an index or an indice. Indices. Indices? Indice. I should probably look up the correct terminology, but you get what I mean, the points. So what we can do is we can actually adjust these so they're not creating these huge gaps anymore. So if I hold control and click on these, they should go back to being just a square. Come on, there we go. So by holding control and clicking on the shape, I've changed how it interacts with itself. As you can see, it's got these little handles, so I can still curve it, but I don't need to worry about all the ins and outs of the curves and that. And some of these I can delete entirely, because I, basically I want to join this one and this one together. So I'm going to get rid of you. And then I am going to bring you up. In fact, I can just control click. There we go. Bring you up. Bring you back. And again, so again, look at a lot of these, and we don't need a lot of the extra vectors they're all drawing in here. So we can shrink them up, we can manipulate the path. That one can go, that one can go. These can be shrunk back in line again. Now you might be looking at this thinking, hmm, that doesn't look particularly neat. It doesn't matter, and you'll see why shortly, because when we bring the top level back in and make it visible again, layer one bring it back in all of that change we've just made there if I highlight the background you can see the red line it's hidden in fact I want to make it permanent there you go it's hidden behind the black border here so we don't need to worry about it it's not going to interfere with it and we can tweak it slightly just to move it completely out of visibility now we do have a bit of an issue with these edges around here they stick out far too far 
But again, we can delete unnecessary vectors. Or unnecessary points. I keep saying vectors. I don't know why. If you ever find this happens, by the way, where some of your image disappears, it's just Inkscape. The easiest way is just to zoom out and back in again, it'll fix itself. I don't know why. <laughs> For a free tool, I'm not too worried about complaining there. So again, I adjust my corners, I adjust my curves, and I basically I bring those bits back in and I try and get rid of as many curve points as possible to try and reduce the amount of points that we're actually making on this. Again, the less points we've got, the smaller the image is going to be. I'm going to move you there. I'm going to tweak your handle slightly. Okay, so there we go. So I'm now happy that the background layer is good. And I'm going to switch back to the first layer. And I'm going to unlock it. And I'm going to click on that. And we can see those two layers, one of them's got hardly any points in it. The other one's still got a few points but it's probably not going to impact the system as much as we think. So we can then do our save again. I'll update our save. So we were on 10k before, and we are now on 9k. So removing those few vectors saved us a KB, which people won't be going, well, that's not a lot. When you're trying to hit a 15k threshold, that's a lot. <laughs> it's like, oh, we sliced it all off, problem solved. So that's the most common way you'll probably find yourself doing this, is if you've got a nice simple image, slice it, break it all apart, take out the bits you don't need, and then use the rest of it. Problem solved.